I have a problem with the chaplains of Harvard University electing someone who by his own admission does not believe in God, precisely as chaplain. A chaplain is someone who has to do with a chapel. A chapel is a place where God is worshipped. If you don't believe in God, then you're not a chaplain. Well, word has just come down the line that Harvard University has elected its first ever atheist chaplain. Yes, you heard that correctly. Greg Epstein, uh, who's been described, in fact, describes himself as a devout atheist who's been working with non-believers and, and, uh, and not even religious seekers with those who don't subscribe to religion at all. He's been unanimously elected by his peers at Harvard to be the president or chief of chaplains. Well, everybody, I think another shark has just been jumped. <laughs> I mean, look, I've been tracing for a long time this issue of disaffiliation. I mean, I know a lot of young people are moving away from organized religion. They're moving toward unbelief. I've been trying to reach out, you know, in different ways precisely to this group. I have no quarrel with, let's say, a, a chaplaincy that, that has an outreach to those who are seeking or those who are disaffiliated, even an outreach to atheists, agnostics, non-believers. No problem at all. I have no quarrel if Harvard University uh, chaplaincy wanted to sponsor a, a philosophical uh, debating society or wanted to sponsor a you know, beer and pizza gathering so we just get together and talk about uh, life issues. But I want to read to you what uh, Mr. Epstein himself said, kind of in defense of his being elected as chaplain. There's a rising group of people who no longer identify with any religious tradition, but still experience a real need for conversation and support around what it means to be a good human and to live an ethical life. Again, I've got no quarrel with being a good human. I have no quarrel whatsoever with trying to live an ethical life. And if there's a, if there's a debating society which is looking into all those questions, terrific. But here's what I do have a problem with. I have a problem with the chaplains of Harvard University electing someone who by his own admission does not believe in God, precisely as chaplain. A chaplain is someone who has to do with a chapel. A chapel is a place where God is worshipped. If you don't believe in God, then you're not a chaplain. If an atheist is chaplain of Harvard, then I'm the emperor of China. I mean, my point is the words have been completely emptied of their meaning. And what's bugging me is, the, the lack of backbone on the part of the other chaplains and religious leaders at Harvard, for whom, obviously, the word religion or chaplain mean nothing at all. Now, this whole problem has been a long time coming. I would trace a lot of it back to two uh, very influential German philosophers from the end of the 18th and the beginning of the 19th centuries. I'm talking about Immanuel Kant and Friedrich Schleiermacher. Immanuel Kant, one of the greatest philosophers of the whole tradition, famously said that religion has nothing finally to do with dogmas and doctrines and liturgies and so on. What it has to do with is ethics. Religion is all about making us more morally upright people. Everything else is extraneous to it. Now, there is a popular form of Kantianism very much alive and well today. Whenever people say, you know, look, it doesn't really matter what you believe, as long as you're a good and decent person. I bet you've heard that. <laughs> That's popular Kantianism. The other figure I mentioned, Friedrich Schleiermacher, he's the founder of modern liberal Protestantism. Schleiermacher, in a number of famous works, says that religion is not really about doctrines, dogmas, and formal beliefs, but rather those things are symbolic expressions of an underlying feeling. He called it the feeling of absolute dependency or the sense and taste for the infinite. Now, I think Schleiermacher still had something of the classical religious tradition in him, but he signaled the great shift away from doctrine, away from formal teaching, and in favor of interior subjective experience. You know, I, I can't help but cite the famous um, 
uh, refutation of Schleiermacher that was offered by his, his colleague, uh, Hegel, the great German philosopher. So religion is the feeling of absolute dependency. Hegel said, if that's true, then my dog is the perfect Christian. <laughs> now, uh, my point is that by steady steps, we move from Schleiermacher's subjectivization of religion to the fact that we have an atheist, someone who denies God's existence, as the chaplain at the leading American university. What you see here is the limit case of the privatization and subjectivization of religion to be simply a matter of ethics and consents or of private interior experience in Schleiermacher's sense. But see, all this, everybody, is so much nonsense. I'm a bishop of the Catholic Church. I hold that an omniscient, omnibenevolent, omnipotent God brought the whole universe into existence from nothing, that this creator God chose Israel to be his holy people, gave them law and covenant, prophecy, temple, that in the fullness of time, this creator God became one of us in Jesus of Nazareth. He died on a Roman cross, rose from the dead, and now invites people under his lordship. Now, say what you want about that. Deny it, quarrel with it, argue with it, tell me I'm crazy for believing it. But by God, it's a religion, <laughs> pun intended. By God, it's about something, and primarily it's about God. Sure, there are different you know, dogmatic formulations and welcome to you know, religious pluralism. I completely get that. But at the end of the day, <laughs> religion is about God. God is worshipped in places like chapels that are presided over by people called chaplains. To say, I can be a chaplain but not believe in God means all those terms have simply been emptied of meaning. Now, once again, I got nothing against Greg Epstein. I've never met him. He seems like a nice fellow from all the accounts I read in the paper. He seems like a really popular, nice guy. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he, he helps people understand their ethical lives better, or get in touch with their feelings. Fine, I have no quarrel with that. I do have a quarrel with the complete lack of self-respect shown by the religious leadership at Harvard that allowed such a man, an atheist, a professed atheist, to be elected chaplain. With that, I do indeed have a problem. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I invite you to share it and to subscribe to my YouTube channel.